Hey guys, it's Wasim from Curious Doc. Today we'll be exploring the biomechanics of one of the most complex joints in the body, the shoulder. Thanks to Todd Oskin who came up with the brilliant idea for this video in part one of Biomechanics of Climbing. In this video, I'll be making the argument of why you need to engage and retract your scapula when climbing. However, the first thing we have to understand is the basic anatomy. Feel free to skip ahead if you know this already. Anyway, the shoulder is made up of three bones, the humerus, scapula, and clavicle. These three bones are connected by three different joints, but we'll focus on two of these for now, the glenohumeral joint and the scapulothoracic joint. Let's start with the glenohumeral joint for a second. This is the glenoid fossa on the scapula, and this is the humerus, hence the name glenohumeral. There's also a group of four muscles called the rotator cuff muscles, which arise from the scapula and hug the head of the humerus. The rotator cuff muscles are extremely important because they serve to keep the humerus head close to the glenoid fossa and prevent dislocations. The rotator cuff is a type of dynamic stabilizer, meaning it has stretch and position receptors. These receptors tell the nervous system when the humerus is being pulled away from the scapula and responds to this by unconsciously contracting the rotator cuff muscles so that it pulls the humerus closer to the glenoid. On top of this, the rotator cuff plays a small role in moving the arm, although most of that's done by bigger muscles like the deltoid, pec major, and the lats. Now let's look at the scapulothoracic joint. This isn't technically a joint, but I'll still call it that. That's because there's no direct bony connection that's connecting the scapula to the thoracic wall. It's mainly held against the body by muscles, and so in a way it's floating behind the body. This allows for a lot better mobility and a wider range of movements. You can see how this is beneficial when you try to lift up your arm. Try to lift up your arm while using the opposite hand to stop the scapula from rotating. In most people, your glenohumeral joint can only move about 120 degrees, with the remaining 60 degrees of movement coming from the rotation of the scapula. Another movement at the scapulothoracic joint is retraction, which is done by squeezing your two scapulas together. Okay, so how does this relate to climbing? Well, when we retract our scapulas, or scapulae, it pulls on the rotator cuff muscles, which has three effects. One, it improves stability of the shoulder complex. Two, it increases the strength of the rotator cuff muscles and three, it decreases the risk of shoulder injuries. The first one is self-explanatory. When you engage the rotator cuff muscles, it pulls the humerus tight against the glenoid, and this makes the whole shoulder a lot more stable. The only downside to this is that you sacrifice mobility, but I mean, if you can prevent a shoulder dislocation, I'd say it's worth it. The second benefit of scapular retraction is that it increases the strength of the rotator cuff muscles. To understand this, we have to look at the length tension relationship of muscles. To cut a super long story short, your muscles are made up of these interweaving fibers that look like this. When your muscle contracts, it shortens like this, and when it relaxes, it unwinds. The more overlap between these fibers, the stronger the contraction. So there's a sweet spot of maximum overlap when the contraction is at its strongest. When the scapula is not retracted, the rotator cuff muscles are loose and the fibers don't overlap much, so you get weak contractions. When the scapula is retracted though, the fibers are much closer to their optimal length, leading to stronger contractions and this helps the climber lift their body weight a bit easier. The third reason we want to retract the scapula is that it reduces the risk of shoulder injuries. If you try doing a pull up without scapular retraction, you'll know what I mean. You'll be using muscles you didn't know you have and placing your arms in strange positions trying to lift yourself. This is because your strong shoulder adductors like the pec major and lat dorsi are too stretched out to work properly. So instead your rotator cuffs will try to compensate and work much harder. However, the rotator cuff muscles are relatively thin and weak. They're great at being dynamic stabilizers of the shoulder, but when you ask it to do things like lift your body weight, you're begging for a shoulder injury. The biggest giveaway that a person isn't retracting their scapulas while climbing is when they do the chicken wings. This is when your elbows flare out like this. Here the rotator cuff muscles are forced to compensate for the biomechanical disadvantage by internally rotating the arm to lift the body. This excessive stress on the rotator cuff leads to tendonitis, which is inflammation of the tendons, or in more serious cases, a tear of the muscle. The other really common injury for climbers is subacromial impingement syndrome. The subacromial space is the space between the scapula and the humerus. A lot of things lie here, but it's important to realize that it's a closed space. So if anything repeatedly pushes up or impinges on the subacromial space, 
it will cause inflammation and pain. That inflammation and swelling will cause the space to narrow even further, which causes more pain and inflammation, leading to this vicious cycle. Not retracting the scapula can cause subacromial impingement for a few reasons. Firstly, when the rotator cuff muscles are loose, it causes the humerus to drift upwards and push up against the subacromial space. Secondly, if you're doing that chicken wing thing, the internal rotation of the arm actually pushes a part of the humerus into that space, called the greater tubercle. And thirdly, as we know, you can get rotator cuff tendonitis if we overuse or strain the muscles too much. When this happens, the inflammation and swelling itself causes further narrowing and leads to that vicious cycle. You can see if you have subacromial impingement syndrome yourself by doing this simple test. Just make a thumbs down sign with your arm stretched directly in front of you, and then use the opposite hand to apply a downward, ow, to apply a downward pressure on the arm. If your shoulder hurts like mine, then it might indicate some subacromial impingement. So to recap, scapular retraction improves shoulder stability, increases the strength of the rotator cuff muscles, and prevents shoulder injuries such as tendonitis, rotator cuff tears, or subacromial impingement syndrome. There is a trade-off though, and that's because scapular retraction restricts your movements. So in cases where you aren't bearing a lot of weight and you need to reach for the next hole or something, then it's completely reasonable not to retract the scapula since you need that extra mobility. But if you're trying to lift your own body weight or part of your body weight with your arms in a sort of comfortable position, it's probably worth keeping those scapulas back. And that's it for this video. If you got anything out of this video, consider subscribing with notifications. And if you have any questions for me, leave a comment below. Cheers.